afternoon, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. John Kelly, profiler, and welcome. Welcome uh, to part three of our very sad case, the murder of Rachel Warren. Um, extremely upsetting, knowing as well that she has five children. So this is uh, a horrendous, sad case. And we're after a monster. In fact, we've decided to call him the monster of Maryland. Okay. This is a real brutal guy. In a way, I'm getting like a, a Bundy kind of feeling with this guy. I mean, it, you know, with the blunt force trauma and all. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more into that as this case goes on. I'd like to give out a shout to, uh, you know, the Grizzlies at Grizzly True Crime. I mean, Gisla K will do an excellent, comprehensive job of explaining the whole story to you. I'm about catching the guy. We're about catching the guy, Stock Incorporated. And we're going to focus on the apprehension, not as much on the story and all that goes along with the story. But, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting story from beginning to where we are. And you might want to look at, uh, you know, uh, Gives a check his out on uh, Grizzly True Crime. Okay, with that being said, you know, let's go forward. Um, you know, in looking at possible profile hits on this guy, uh, you know, knowing that we have a Hispanic male in his early to mid 20s, um, you know, we have to take into consideration that he's wanted in. Uh, California, the LA area, uh, for uh, an attack, a sexual attack, and for breaking into a house. So I'm very, I'm very uh, concerned about this guy acting out again. Obviously, uh, he left a witness there. He did not kill the woman, but it doesn't look like he's leaving any more witnesses. Uh, I understand there might be some other women in uh, Maryland uh, that are homicides and. Uh, whether they're connected to this guy or not, I do not know. Uh, I'm sure if they were, law enforcement would have uh, brought that out already. But anyway, uh, something else uh, we want to we want to bring out, and it's part of uh, one of our hits, is this guy might be known for abruptly leaving the area. Like if he was there one day and gone the next, he might have taken off. Um, you know, after he killed uh, Miss Morin. I mean, you don't know, okay? Flight uh, is always, uh, can be, and, and not always, but can be a sign of guilt. So if he left abruptly, you know, it's something we have to take a look at. Something that's very, very important. Also, the other thing we want to take a look at is he may be known for changing his appearance after, uh, you know, Miss Morin was murdered. I mean, that's something uh, that these guys do, I mean, right after a murder, just in case anybody saw them, they might decide to uh, change their appearance. So if somebody knows him in the area, he was there one day, gone the next, left abruptly, whatever, you know, all of a sudden his appearance started to change, start growing himself a nice big, uh, you know, beard or something like that. You got the feeling like uh, something might be wrong. And who knows, might be a tip for the police. Can't say definitely anybody decides to grow a beard, you know, as a killer. But just saying this guy probably did something to try to alter his appearance after the murder, just in case anybody from the trail got a look at him. OK. Uh, he's supposed to be Hispanic. So, again, you know, this is not guaranteed, but he may have patronized uh, restaurants that specialize in Spanish food. OK. Uh, a lot of us you know, eat uh, from the, uh, you know, the culture that we came from. So it might be uh, something to look at. Somebody might know him from attending a, uh, a Spanish restaurant or, or any restaurant uh, for that matter. I just put Spanish out there because culturally, you know, he's uh, Hispanic. You know, also, uh, he had to eat somewhere, right? I mean, he just wasn't I remember hanging around Maryland not eating, so he had to eat somewhere. Also, he had to sleep somewhere. Okay, I think this is very important too. You know, uh, where did he sleep? Where did he stay? Somebody's seen him. Somebody's seen him. They know him and they need to report him. Okay. Now, also, something I picked up from the video 
of him leaving the house in California. And I'd like you guys to give me your feedback on this. Is it looked like he had something hanging as he's going down the steps and heading to his vehicle or wherever he was going. But as he's leaving towards the very end of the video, you'll see something dangling on his right side. I'm wondering, do you think that's a knife? It looks like it could be a knife in a sheath, or it looks like some kind of tool that he could have hanging from his belt. Okay. So I think this is very, very important. Because that could be uh, some kind of weapon that he uses to intimidate people. But you guys need to take a look at it. You know, we're getting our, you've got our opinions. We like your opinions on it too. What kind of uh, knife or tool do you think it is? You know, something else that is very, very important. If he came here from California, maybe he drove here from California. So maybe he, had a, he came in uh, to Maryland with uh, in in a car with California plates, okay? So if he showed up in Maryland in a car with California plates, that's something uh, that, uh, you know, should be a, uh, a red flag and maybe the police should know about that. Also, especially if he's of that build that you see in the video. Uh, also, uh, you know, he may have talked to people. I mean, I'm sure he's talked to somebody somewhere since he's been here from California. He may have talked to somebody about the West Coast and about L.A. and about California. You know, they may have had, he may have had conversations about that because he'd be a new guy maybe in town. People say, how did, you know, where'd you come from? What was it like out there? I've heard a lot about Hollywood or whatever, blah, 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 blah. So if there was a lot of small talk or even cross talk about, you know, uh, L.A. and uh, the West Coast, that's another red flag. Uh, if he fits the bill, looks like the guy in the video could be a person, uh, could be a possible person of interest. OK, something else as well. Um, you know, uh, he could have uh, uh, been on camera somewhere. And we just don't know that it's him, okay? If he was stalking her or following her uh, for any length of time, if uh, law enforcement goes back to various places she has been, or, um, you know, for instance, like a gym or something like that, um, they could, it could be on a gym's camera or on a restaurant's camera or a bar's camera, uh, wherever she's been, if he was stalking and following her, he might be in the shot. He might be in the video or in the photo, you know, uh, of uh, someone that was uh, paying uh, special attention to her, particular attention to her. Of course. OK, so, uh, you know, that's what we got for now. Uh, we're going to be dive, deep diving into more uh, sooner than later. So we'll keep you posted. Um Again, uh, let's get this monster of Maryland off the street. And uh, we'll probably have more for you next week. We want to see what uh, happens over the next couple of days. But somebody knows him. Somebody's seen him. Somebody's talked to him. And, um, you know, uh, we just need to find out his name. We already have him uh, connected. The law enforcement did a fantastic job. They have him connected really solidly. So let's see, uh, you know, if we can uh, find out who this guy is. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. We truly appreciate it. Most importantly, watch yourself out there, be on your toes, stay safe, and God bless. Thank you.